Hello everybody, Anton Crilly here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And in today's video, we're gonna be covering how to build a Shopify store in 10 steps. Now, before we get into this, I will just say that 10 steps sounds simple enough, and in reality it is. But if this is the first Shopify store that you are building, you very well may need to go back and revisit this lesson multiple times. So what I'm also going to do is in the description, post timestamps to each of these steps. That way, if you wanna go through a few of them, take a break and come back, or if you wanna come back a few days from now, you can find exactly what it is you are looking for, because this video will be longer than usual. And again, even though it's just 10 steps, we do have a lot to cover. So you might want to bookmark it, save it to your computer. My advice would be do that because again, this is going to be full of information that you need if you want to build a Shopify store the right way. Okay, the specific things we're gonna cover, first is how to sign up with Shopify. Then we're going to cover how to upload a theme to your Shopify store. We're going to cover how to choose and register a domain name, how to create collections on Shopify, how to upload products to your Shopify store, how to add both pages, blogs, and blog posts, how to create menus and navigations, as Shopify calls them, how to customize your Shopify theme settings, how to configure the settings in your Shopify account, and then we're gonna wrap it up with how to install apps. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna share how to sign up with Shopify. To sign up for a Shopify account, you can simply go to shopify.com or if you wanna get a special offer when signing up and also help support Dropship Lifestyle, I will post a link in the description of this episode that will take you to this page. And when you get there, you'll see my face and a video from me, but you'll also see the ability to sign up for a three free day trial. And then also the offer to get your first three months on Shopify for only $1 a month. This is an incredible offer. You get the full functionality of the platform. And again, you have 90 days to use it at $1 a month. Absolutely amazing offer and well worth it. Again, this link will be in the description. And when you get here, all you need to do is enter the email address that you want to use to create this account. Little side note here, if you already have other Shopify stores and you want them all to be linked together under one email address, under one login, so you can easily toggle between them, you can use that email address here, but don't worry, you can also update this email address in the future. So for now, I'm simply gonna go ahead and type in an email address that I want to use and then I'm going to click start free trial. So after that, you'll be greeted with this screen and I'll tell you, it's gonna ask you some questions here, but these aren't really things we even need to answer. This is just to give Shopify more information about who is signing up for the platform. So you can see here, you could just click skip all. I'll answer them just so you can see what the questions are. It says, which best describe you? I'll choose I'm just starting, go to next. Where would you like to sell? An online store, go ahead and click next. What do you plan to sell? I'll choose drop shipping, but again, this doesn't really matter. It's not gonna affect your account in any way besides possibly some apps that Shopify recommends to you. After that, it's going to say, where will your business be located? So here you should choose whatever country or region you're planning on selling to. For me, that is the United States. So I'll leave it as is and click next. After that, it's going to say you can choose an account to continue with Shopify. Again, this is where I was referencing. If you already have other Shopify accounts, you can choose one of them that's already created or you can click add account to create a new one. Not gonna affect anything besides being able to to toggle through your Shopify accounts when you're logged in. So I'll go ahead and I will choose one. And then you see here, it just says creating your account. So we'll give it a minute or so while it does its thing and builds us a blank Shopify template to work off of. And just like that, we have now signed up with Shopify. You can see here, it says your trial just started. It shows us down here that three days after today is when that free trial would end and we would get into monthly billing if we choose select a plan. And then it also takes us through a list of steps that Shopify recommends to get started. Now we're not going to work directly off that list because again, what I wanna do is take you through the 10 steps that you should follow if you are building a new Shopify store. So that was step one, signing up with Shopify. Now let's move into step two, which is uploading a theme. To upload a theme in Shopify, it's really very simple. You simply want to log in to your Shopify admin panel, which is what we're looking at right now. Then you want to click on online store in the left navigation, and then you want to click where it says themes. 
Now, at the time of recording, the theme that Shopify installs by default is called Dawn. You can see right here, it's installed, and it shows that that is the current theme. I am going to upload a different theme for this demonstration, but I also want you to know that if you scroll down on this page, you'll see the section called Popular Free Themes, and you can scroll through here, even go to the Shopify theme store, so I'll pull that up real quick. And here, you can see free and paid themes. If you're not familiar with themes and what they are, it's one of the things that's really cool about Shopify. Basically, it is a way to customize how your store looks and functions without needing to hire expensive developers and add a bunch of custom code. So if you're at this stage and you're ready to build a store and you, in your head, almost know what you want it to look like, then I would recommend going into the theme store. You could sort by free, you could sort by paid, you could sort by industry, and just go through what is available and try to find something that suits your eye, that as a starting point looks like you want your store to look, because when you customize it, if you find something you like, you'll be able to make those customizations to have it match what you have in your mind. And it is a good idea to have something in your head of how you want your store to look before you just start building, or else you might get a jumbled together mess of a little of this, a little of that, and that would hurt conversions in the long run. But again, what we're going to do here is simply come back to our Shopify admin, and I'm gonna scroll up here, and then under theme library, you'll see we can click add theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and then I'm gonna click where it says upload a zip file. Very important, if you have any themes downloaded that you want to upload to Shopify, it's important that those files are compressed or zipped for another term, and that basically means that they have that file extension. So on your computer, if you have a theme saved, it should be the theme name, whatever that is, .zip. If you just upload an uncompressed file, or folder, I should say, it's not going to work. So make sure you have that zip file. Now the theme that I'm going to upload is the Dropship Lifestyle Manhattan theme. That is our newest theme that is available to all Dropship Lifestyle members, which by the way, if you are a member of the Dropship Blueprint, you could just go back to your members area, go to module three, because that goes through everything I'm gonna share in this video, plus a whole lot more. But to do this, I'm simply going to click right here where it says upload zip file. Let me move out of the way so you could see that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna drag it over from my computer where I have it saved as a zip. And then I'm going to click upload file. Now, while this is uploading, something else that I love about Shopify is you can have multiple themes installed in your Shopify admin at the same time. And what that means is, let's say you decide, maybe you're already up and running, you have a new theme that you want to switch to. If you just uploaded it and the way Shopify worked was it just published that as your live theme, the problem with that would be it wouldn't be customized yet, so there would be a lot of stuff that looked very bare bones and not complete. But because Shopify allows us to upload and publish multiple themes, if you already have a store up and running, you can upload your next theme and it'll be uploaded down here to your theme library, where then you can make customizations you want to, and only after it's done and you like the way it looks, then you can click publish and that will replace your existing theme, meaning that is what new website visitors will see. So pretty cool thing that's built into Shopify. But again, because this store now is not published yet, no one's gonna see it at this point, I can go ahead here and just click publish. And when I do, it's just letting me know it's going to replace the current theme, which is what we want. And now you'll see up here, it says Dropship Lifestyle Manhattan. That theme is now not only uploaded to the store, but that is the published theme. If for some reason we wanted to switch back to Dawn or anything else, we can just click, click publish. And again, it would swap between them. But we're not gonna get into here yet into customizing because the next thing that I wanna cover, which is step three of this 10 step process, is choosing and registering a domain name. So let's go ahead and do that right now. When it comes to picking a domain name and connecting it to Shopify, they give you a couple different options. One of them is if you already own the domain name somewhere else, for example, on GoDaddy or Namecheap or pretty much anywhere, you can simply go to your Shopify admin panel, click into settings by going to the gear icon in the bottom left corner, and then clicking on domains. And when you do, it'll take you to this page that gives you those options of either buying a new domain or connecting an existing domain. So again, if you already own that domain name somewhere else, you can click connect existing domain, and that's how you would link that domain to your Shopify account. Because you'll see by default, what Shopify will do when you make a new account, like we just did maybe 10 minutes ago, is give you a random generated mix of letters and numbers, .myshopify.com, and that's what people would go to to find your store. But of course, we do not want that because it honestly looks scammy, it doesn't look professional, so we want a real domain name.
Now, when it comes to some quick domain name rules that I always follow, one is that it should always be a .com or your country's equivalent of .com. It also should never have any dashes in the domain name. And we always try to make it three words or less. So a few rules we always stick to. And I'll say this just right here to make things extremely simple. If you do not have a domain name yet, my advice would be to click where it says buy a new domain in Shopify, search for it through there because Shopify will allow you to buy it through them and then you can link it up almost instantaneously and that domain name is what people will type in to find your store. Again, if you don't have one, my advice is to buy it on Shopify. Now, when it comes to what your domain name should be, again, I just went through a few quick rules, but I'm also going to link to this free tool in the description of this episode, which is Shopify's business name generator. And you can type in a few different keywords and it'll give you domain name ideas. So let's just say we were building a surfboard store. Maybe we wanna say a modern and fun surfboard store and then click let's go and we'll see what business names it comes up with. We have Rideology Surf Shop, Board Chill Surf Shop, Aqua Glide Surf Shop, Aqua Wave. Maybe we would wanna do like Aqua Surfboards if that was available. Uh, Surfify, that's kind of funny. Ride Guru, Board Bliss, Ride Zen Surf Store. So not to say I would choose one of these, but it's a way to again, get some ideas so that you can then search for them in Shopify to buy them, see what is available, which by the way, another tip, if you find a domain name already has an existing store on it, or it's parked and someone's trying to sell it, don't do that. Buy your domain through Shopify. I think it's $14 a year and you don't need to pay anybody hundreds or thousands of dollars to get a domain name. So again, use this tool that would be linked below for ideas. When you find one you like, come here, search for it on Shopify. From there, you can buy it, make that your primary domain from the same screen. And that is then how people will find your store. So once you go ahead and do this and you choose your domain and you purchase it or link an existing domain to Shopify, it's time to move on to step four, which is to create collections in your Shopify account. So let's go ahead and do that now. To get to this screen in your Shopify admin, you'll simply wanna click on products and it will expand all the options in that section and then click right up top where it says collections. Now collections, you could think of as categories. So different product categories on your store and yes, Products can be in multiple collections and they often will be. So what you should do initially as you're first building your store is make a list either in a Google Doc or notes, whatever, of the collections you want to have. And the way you can get ideas for these collections is by going to your top two or three competitor stores and see how they categorize their products and try to match what they're doing. Because if they're the top stores that already exist in your niche, they probably know what they're doing when it comes to categorizing products in a way that makes it easy for potential customers to find what they want. So I've went ahead and done that and I have the list of collections I want to create on a separate monitor right now. But what I'm gonna do is show you how to create them. So simply come to this page and then right up top, you can click where it says create collections. And the first one I'm going to create is just going to be called surfboards because this will be a demo surfboard store. And from there, you see you have tons of different options of different information you can enter for a description for that collection, where you want to publish this to, if you want to upload an image for this collection, and those are all things we can cover later in this lesson. But for now, I wanna show you how we get products to actually appear in these collections. You see you have the option of making it a manual collection, and this is where you would have to add products manually to be included in this collection. We do not use that. We use automated and the criteria we use or the conditions are that in order to be in this collection, in this case, the surfboard collection, the product tag must be equal to, and then we'll put surfboards, the same name as the collection, and then we'll go ahead and click save. Now, what this means is in the future, when we are uploading products to our store, if we add the tag surfboards to them, they will automatically get put into the correct collection. So. Let's go ahead and come back here now, and then we're gonna add a couple more. The next one we would do would be subcategories of different surfboards that we were to offer. For example, maybe we have hybrid surfboards. Again, what makes them appear in this collection? Product tag is equal to hybrid surfboards. Go ahead and click save. And then what I'm gonna do is basically fast forward. You'll see me again in the future, but I'm gonna add maybe 15 or 20 of these that I want to have that I found through future competitors' websites. But again, I'm just gonna create them all following this same process. 
Okay, so we're back now a little bit less than 10 minutes into the future, and you can see I have added all of these different collections, again, based off what future competitors are doing, and these are all currently set as product conditions to have the product tag be equal to whatever that collection should include. Now, we're gonna create a few more, but these I wanted to show you again because we make these a little bit differently. These are going to be collections that we use for sorting by price. So first, we'll do under 100. And for this, what we do is change the criteria here where price, in this case, is less than, and in this case would be $100. Go ahead and click Save. So you see here now, we are using basically different functionality to determine what should be in that collection. The next one we will call 100 to 500. And for this, we will do price is greater than, and in this case, we'll do 99. And then we're going to add another condition where the price is less than. And then here we'll put 501. Go ahead and click Save. And then we're gonna create a few more of these. So we'll come back here, click Create Another Collection. The next one we will do is 500 to 1000. Here, the criteria will be price is greater than, and this will be 499. And then we will add another condition where price is less than, and this will be 1001. Go ahead and click Save. Then we will do our next one by clicking Create Another Collection. This one will be 1000 to 2000. So put that up there as the name. The criteria will be price is greater than 999. And add another condition, price is less than, and in this case, it will be 2001. And then we will create the final one here by going to create another collection. And this one we will call $2,000 and up. Again, the way you should get these ideas, and especially for the pricing ones, is based on your market and basically the prices of products you will be selling. And for this one, we're just gonna do price is greater than, and for this one, we will do 1999 and click save. And then we can click here into collections again. And now you can see the full list of collections that I've created with the criteria that will basically pull products into them. Right now, there's obviously zero products in all of them because we have not got to the uploading product part of this training yet, but don't worry, we will get there. And because we used this automated criteria as Shopify calls it, if the products match any of these conditions, they will automatically be put into these collections. Okay, with that being said, what we're gonna do next is go ahead and start uploading products. To get to the screen, all you need to do is log in to your Shopify admin and then click on products. And by default, you will see this screen that gives you a few different options. You can either click find products to sell or you can import products or you can add your products manually. And I'm assuming there are many different types of people watching this video right now. So the one that you will choose is really based on your specific business. For the dropship lifestyle model, when we're building a new store, what we are doing is uploading what I call demo products. And we're doing this so we can show potential suppliers what our our store looks like, which will help us to get approved with silver and gold suppliers, which are the only type that we want to work with. But if you already have a store or you have your own products, whatever that may be, then my advice would be to use the import products option. And what this allows you to do is basically upload an Excel sheet or a Google sheet that is saved as a .csv file. And what that will allow you to do is basically bulk upload products. And it's very simple if you already have a bunch of product information that you easily want to get into your Shopify store in one shot. But for the dropship lifestyle model at this point, what we're gonna be doing is uploading them manually, so one at a time. And to do that, we're simply going to click here where it says add your products. And what I've done before I started this lesson is create three different versions of, again, basically fake products that we can use to show potential suppliers what our store will look like. And what I did is make three versions, three different colors of an AI generated surfboard. So the first one for the title. This is the product name. So whatever you want to name that, you can put it there. And then for the description, I already have that created as well. So I'm simply going to go ahead and paste that here. Now for product category, you can look for different categories that Shopify already has. This can be useful in the future when you're submitting your products to different shopping engines. I'm going to go ahead and use surfboard there. For product type, I'm also going to make this surfboard. So I'll type that in there. For surfboards, Let's get it to come up if I press enter. 
okay? And then for vendor, because this is a demo product, I'm just going to choose, again, the store name, which we decided to call Shaka Surfboards. So I'll go ahead and add it there. Again, vendor is the, the brand or the supplier. So if you're uploading products from an existing brand or supplier, or even if it's your own brand, that is where you would put it. Now for tags down here, this is what I was referencing in the previous step. Because we made those automated collections, the tags that we put in here will determine which collections this product goes into. So let's just say I want it to be in top rated. Should be like that. I can click add top rated. And then let's say we wanted this to be in surfboards. So I could just type in surfboards. Go ahead and add that one. And then we wanna do, let's say staff picks. Go ahead and apply that. And then let's say we also wanted to have a sort by color option. Maybe we call this blue. And then let's say this is a long board. We can also do long boards. So again, whatever this product is relevant in terms of tags, that is what you would add here. From there, I'm just gonna click save again and we will make sure it updates it. So now we have all the tags saved. And then here for media is where you can put any images of that product. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this over. That is the blue surfboard. For pricing, the price, this would be what the customer paid for it. So let's say this one was $799 and the compare out price is basically what they would see as a strike through price, right? Like normal everyday price crossed out. Then what they would actually pay is the price that you listed for. If you want to include different cost per items for profit tracking, let's just say wholesale on this was, we'll do 300. Then it would show what the potential profit was for each sale. For here, you can do uh, SKUs, so stock keeping units. This is a demo product, so I'll just call it ABC1. And then we can have track uh, quantity on if we want. And we can come up here and we'll click save yet again. And then let's just come down and see if there's anything else we want to fill out. So let's just say for available, we say we have eight of these in stock. And then we click save. Then what we can do is come up here and we can go ahead and click preview. And what that will do is show us this basically, again, demo product on the store. Remember, we haven't configured any of the theme settings yet, so it's gonna look very basic. We're gonna get to how we make this actually look good a little bit later. But like I just showed you, we now have the product name, we have the vendor name, the product image, the list price that is struck out, the price that the customer would pay, and how much they're saving. Now there's also some more things on here that again, we'll talk about later, but this is what it looks like, right? We have our expandable and collapsible different sections here with all of the information that we just put into this product page. So what I'm gonna do now is just come back and I'm gonna create two more. I'm gonna make them identical, except I'm going to do a yellow version and then I'll also do a red version. So we'll have three different products on this demo store. Okay, and just like that, two minutes later, we now have three demo products on this store. And as you see, as I hover over them, I can click on the eye icon and it'll open up a preview of that product page. Again, these all look extremely basic because we have not customized anything yet, but we will, so don't worry, we'll get there. But what you should do now, if you're following along, is create either the demo products or put the live products into your product section in your Shopify admin now. And once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move forward and I'm gonna show you how to add pages and also blog posts to your Shopify store. To get to this screen in your Shopify account, you simply need to log in to your admin panel, then click on online store and then click on pages. Now, by default, when you create your Shopify account, it will create one page for you. That page is called Contact, and I will show you how to edit that. But in addition to this, I recommend creating three more pages that I'll take you through at this point in the lesson. Those are your About Us page, also your Privacy Policy, and your Terms of Service. Now, as far as additional pages that you may want to create now or in the future, that can include things like a price match guarantee, a shipping and returns policy, really anything thing you think is relevant to your store, you can follow the same process for. So for the contact page, again, that was created by default, I'm simply going to click into that. And then I'll show you how you can make edits here should you want to. So what I'm gonna do is simply rename this from contact to contact us. And you'll see here by default, the theme template that it's using for this page is contact. And you wanna leave it on that because when you do, what this page is going to have on it is a contact form. So if I click on view page, you can see what it looks like now. It says contact us. And then it has a section where the website visitor can enter their name, email, phone number, and comment, and submit that to you as the store owner.
Now, other things you might want to add on this page if you have them is the email address so that people could reach you at, possibly a physical address if you have one of those, and also a phone number. You could type those things in here and they will appear above the contact form on this page. Now, the next page that I recommend having, again, is the About Us page. And to create this, you could simply go back to the screen and click up here where it says Add Page. And for this one, we will simply name it About Us. And you can see this one is using the theme template of a default page. That is what we want. But again, this is where you can cycle through Contact and Default Page. The difference, again, is Contact will have that basically opt-in box or place where people can submit a message. So I've already written up a default About Us page template for this demo store. I'm simply going to paste it here, and then I'm going to click Save, make sure it is visible, and then when I click View Page, you can see now what our About Us page looks like. Okay, so that is two out of the four pages that I just recommended. Again, we now have our About Us page and we have our Contact page, but we also want the Terms of Service and the Privacy Policy. So to get to those, what you want to do is click on the settings gear icon in the bottom left of your Shopify navigation. And then right towards the bottom here, you wanna click on where it says policies. When you do, it'll bring you up to this page where you see you can do things like create that return and refund policy. If you're ready to do that, you can enter it here right now. But again, we're gonna do privacy policy and terms of service. And what I'm going to do for privacy policy is click right here where it says create from template. And what this is going to do is use Shopify's default privacy policy and everything in green text with a yellow background is Shopify basically telling you what should be modified and how you can use this and really make it your own. But I'm just gonna delete that. And then here for date, you can enter whatever today's date is for you. This would be the last time this was updated. So I'm just gonna make that 11 20 2023. And then of course you could change the color to make it all match. And then I'll go through it quickly, but just show you what it says. Again, you should read through this yourself because this will be your privacy policy. But anything in here that you want to change, for example here, this is where you can make those modifications according to what Shopify basically directs you to do. They know a lot more about this stuff than I do. So again, uh, all of this stuff, I, you definitely can work off their template. Again, we typically do, but the modifications that we make are based on what Shopify is instructing us to do. And just make sure when all is said and done and you have something you're going to publish, you don't have any of this text that basically um, says, you know, note to merchant, fill this out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You want to make sure that the information that you actually have here is information that um, isn't filler text, basically. So I'm just gonna go through and remove some of these things here. And then once they are all gone, we can then move down to the next page we want to create, which is the terms of service. And just like up top, we're going to click here where it says create from template. And just like before, if we scroll through, you'll see different areas that can and should be changed. For example, here, a refund policy. So if you have a refund policy already, you can link to it from there. Again, all of these things can be updated in the future. So it's not like you need everything done now, especially if it's a demo store, but here, you see you could put a link to your privacy policy. Again, you should fill these out, make them complete, read through them because the terms that you put here are the terms that your site will basically be held to. Now that we have those two page templates created, I'm gonna come up here and I'm simply going to click save. And I just wanna call out here that when we come back to our pages area in the Shopify admin, we're still only seeing two out of those four. Just know though that the privacy policy page and the terms of service do exist. They are on live URLs that website visitors will be able to go to, but any pages that you create through the policy section in settings are not going to be linked up here in your admin. They're going to be discoverable through menus you create on your store, but that is what we're going to cover in the next step of this lesson. But before we do that, I just wanna quickly introduce you to the Shopify blogging system, let you know how it works and also create a few different sample blog posts. So to get to the section, all you need to do is go to your Shopify admin and then under online store, click where it says blog posts. And by default, you will not have any obviously. Now I'll say this before I show you how to create these. It is not necessary to create blog posts when you're first starting out. Some people will go the lifetime of the business without them. So don't feel like you have to do this. I just want to show you how this works should you want to. So in order to do this, you can simply click create blog posts. And from here, just like with the other parts of Shopify, you can give it a title, which would be the name of the blog post. And then in the content section, you can put whatever that blog post is. Now, by default, Shopify will have one blog created. You can see here, this blog post is called news. 
if for some reason you wanted multiple blogs on your store, you could click create a new blog. And that's not a new blog post. It's basically a new blog section. So if you want multiple, that is how to do it. And then you can also set it to either be hidden or visible. And then of course, for images, you can find an image that you want to use and you can just drag it over here. And that will be the featured image for the blog post. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And then if I come back to our blogs here, you'll see we have our first one created. Again, I'm gonna keep saying it, you do not need to do this, but I do wanna show you how these are created. So you can see one, how to do it, and two, what they actually look like on your store. And when we get to a future section of this lesson, so you could see how you actually add them to your homepage if you want to show them off. So for this one, I'm gonna enter the text that we had written for this blog post. I'm gonna go ahead and drag over the image for it. I'm gonna make sure it's visible and click save. And then we will add one more. So same process, add blog post. Let me go and get the content for it. I'll go ahead and just copy and paste that over. Remember title is the name of that blog post. Let's go ahead and grab the whole thing, paste it here. Go ahead and grab the image and put that on this blog. And then I'll go ahead and make it visible and click save, and then I will go back, and now you can see we have our three blog posts that are all visible on the store. So again, don't feel like you need to do that blogging part yet, but that is how you would create them when and if you want to. What I would want you to do now, though, is create those four pages. Again, contact us, about us, privacy policy, and terms of service. And once you do that, we can now move forward to the next step of this lesson, which is how to create menus, aka navigations. So let's go ahead and do that right now. To get to this screen, you simply need to log in to your Shopify admin, click on online store, and then click down here where it says navigation. Now, navigations are basically Shopify's term for menus, and you can create as many of these as you want. And the way you can think of these are different ways that a user can click through your site. So the goal is to make different navigations, AKA menus, that will make it easy for website visitors to find what you want them to find. This can be things like different pages on your store, even blog posts, to things like different product categories, AKA collections. Again, whatever you think would make your user experience the best. So by default, there are going to be two that are created out of the box. One is called footer menu and one is called main menu. We're going to start by modifying the main menu. To do that, simply click into it. And from here, we're going to add some more links to it. So it starts with home, then it has catalog, then it has contact. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna delete catalog and I'm going to delete contact from here because we're not going to need them. Then what I'm going to do is start adding menu items. So the first one that I'm going to add is going to be called surfboards. So I'm gonna type that in and then here you can go through different pages and collections that are already on your store. So I'm gonna go into collections here and I'm going to look for surfboards and we're not gonna use any filtering tags here because we already have that collection as an automated collection. So we can go ahead and click add. And from there, what we can do is start to add different sub collections basically. So if you recall earlier in this lesson, when we created our collections, we had all different ones that we made. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab a couple of them. The first one will be hybrids. So I'm gonna look for hybrid surfboards. Then I can even just search for that here and then go into collections and here is hybrid surfboards. I'm gonna go ahead and click add and you'll see by default that is now just a different link in the menu, but I want that to be nested under surfboards. So all I'm going to do is click these dots right here and I'm going to drag it under surfboards. So now you see we have surfboards and then as a sub collection, sub category, we have hybrid surfboards. The next one I'm going to do is shortboards. So I'm gonna click add menu item. I'm going to name it shortboards. I'm going to search for it. There it is, I'm going to click add. And then now you see we have it there. Let's keep going with this list and I'm gonna add three more. Just like before, I'm going to click add menu item. This one's going to be mid length. Go ahead and find it. Go ahead and click add. Keep moving forward here. We'll do long boards. And then finally, we'll do one more and this will just show all surfboards. We'll search for that here. Collections, all surfboards. Go ahead and click add. So now we have our main link in this navigation. Then we have surfboards and we have these as the dropdowns. What I'll do now is go ahead and just add a few more. The first one I'm going to do is gonna be called collections. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click add menu item. Collections, search for collections. It's not gonna let me search for it, so I'll just click it right here. We want it to be all collections. 
go ahead and click add. And you'll see this now is not nested. But if it was, or we accidentally put it there, again, we can just drag it, drag and hold and move it out. Then we will do essentials. And then I'll just go ahead and again, we'll jump into the future a little bit, but I'll add a few more collections here on this menu. Okay, and just like that, we now have our main menu completed. And just so you know, when you're on this view in your own Shopify account, you can just click expand or collapse to see what's in the nested menus. And once you're happy with it, you can just go ahead and click save menu. And there you can come back to your menu screen, which again, will show all of the menus that you have created. So the next one we're gonna do is what they call the footer menu by default. And we're simply going to rename this one as a starting point. And what I recommend you do with this one is name it whatever your store name is. So this one is Shaka Surf Boards. And then you'll see it starts with search. We're gonna go ahead and add our next item here. And that is going to be surfboards that goes to that main collection. So I'm just gonna search for it here. Go to collections, find surfboards, click add. Then we're going to do new arrivals in this as well. So click add menu item, new arrivals. We're gonna search for it. There it is. And then we'll do one more, which is on sale now. So again, add menu item. And as you can see, it's kind of a repetitive process, but it really is simple. Once you have everything set up correctly to begin with, go ahead and click save. Now we have that menu complete. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and continue to create a few more. So the next one that we're going to create with a new menu here is going to be called Quick Links. And to do this, I'm just gonna click Add New. And again, I'm gonna name this one Quick Links. And then we will start adding items to this menu. The first page will be the About Us page. So I'll go ahead and just type it in there and then I'll search for it. And then we have, let's see here, Pages, About Us. Go ahead and click Add. Then we're gonna add our Privacy Policy. And this is how you do that, Add Menu Item. We're gonna go privacy policy, we're gonna search. And remember this comes up under policies, but here it is, the privacy policy we created a bit earlier. Then we will do our terms of service in this menu as well. So we will name it, we will search for it. Here's terms of service. And then finally, we're going to add our contact us page to this menu. So we'll do add menu item, contact us, we'll go to pages, here is contact us, go ahead and click add go ahead and click save menu, and then we'll go back. And now you'll see we have three menus created. Again, you can create even more of these things like sort by color, sort by price, whatever it is you want. But at this point, you see now we have three of them. And these are three that I would definitely recommend you have before reaching out to suppliers. So my advice would be to go ahead and set this up, then move forward with this lesson where we move in to kind of the, the funnest part of this where everything really starts coming together, which is customizing your theme to make your store look good, to make it unique, to make it stand out. So let's go ahead and do that right now. To get to this screen, all you need to do is log in to your Shopify admin, then click on online store, and then click on themes. And next to all of the themes you have installed, you're gonna see this little button that says customize. So that is where we're going to be working in this section of this lesson. But I do just wanna call out that it's important to make sure the theme you're customizing is the theme you actually want to go live with. Because you could see here, we have Dawn, I'm not gonna customize that. Because again, we want to use the Dropship Lifestyle Manhattan theme which again is the newest theme for Dropship Lifestyle members. And again, if you are a member of Dropship Lifestyle, there's no need for you to be watching this lesson. Simply go into the blueprint and go into all the lessons from module three that show you how to do this step-by-step -step in detail and also use all of the themes custom functionality. Now, one thing that I also share there in module three of the blueprint are all of the image sizes you need for this theme to make the most out of it, and then how to create them in Canva, which is the tool that we use. Um, so again, for whatever theme you are using, if you're not a member of Dropship Lifestyle, just look through that theme's documentation so you can make sure you create the correct images at the correct sizes, things like your logo, your homepage images, any custom images for collections or product pages. You wanna have those done first because then this process will be much easier. And since we already have them created, what I'm first going to do before going into the customizer is click on content right here. And then I'm going to click on files. And right now the three files here are from those three demo products. And then I'm gonna open the folder that has all of the images that we need that we created for this store. Go ahead and click open. And then what Shopify is gonna do is just upload them all to our file database. So what's great about this is we don't need any external hosting or anything for our images. Now these all exist in our Shopify account. So when we are editing and modifying and customizing our theme, we can just choose from these images that again, we already created and uploaded here, which is what I would encourage you to do when you're at this stage of the process. 
So from here, we're just gonna click back into online store. And now we can go into customize for the theme. And as you can see, like I said before, it does look extremely boring. This is nothing you would ever want to go live with, but this is where we have the chance to really make the store our own by using the Shopify theme customizer. Now, like I mentioned again a few times, but it is important to note, each theme on Shopify is different and it will give you different options to edit, which is why it's important to go through any theme documentation for whichever free theme you use or whichever theme you purchase so you can make sure you know what options are available to you and so you can make sure you create the right assets to make the store do what it should. But the first thing that we're going to modify with this theme is the colors and the typography, meaning the font and whatnot. And to do that, you wanna click this gear icon right here. So starting, it says logo. We can select an image for our logo. Remember, we just uploaded our files to our store. One of those was the logo we created. So I'm simply going to click where it says select image right here. And then you'll see this is our logo that we had already uploaded. So I'm gonna click done. And then it's going to put the logo where the logo should go. Now on the Dropship Lifestyle theme, we have the option to make it smaller or bigger. So you could play around with it and get it the size you want it. Then we can change our favicon, which is what's gonna appear up here. Right now it's the Shopify logo, but we're gonna make that our own. So let me scroll down and we'll choose this pink one. Go ahead and click done. And that will update to show that as the favicon. The next thing is colors. And here you'll see, again, every theme is gonna give you different options, but you'll see which things you can edit and basically the, the options for them, right? If you wanted to do things like gradients with the Manhattan theme, you could do that, where the colors kind of transition from one to another. But the main thing I'll say here is for whatever colors you decide to use, my advice would be to not go with more than three of them, because you do want things to look consistent and you don't want it to be a jumbled mess of different fonts and colors, because things can start getting pretty ugly pretty fast. But to edit them, you can simply click into the color picker and I'm gonna go ahead and use our pink for the accent color. We are not going to do a gradient. And then for our accent two, I'm gonna use a teal color that we selected. So I'm just gonna paste that hex code there, which is the exact code for the teal color we want to use. Again, no gradient there. When it comes to text colors, we're going to use the secondary text as it is, but we are going to change the outline color for buttons. So I'm gonna grab that color and come in here and I'm simply going to paste it and then I can click off it and you can see it's updated. Background one, we're going to keep on white. For background two, I am going to change this shade of gray or off-white if you wanna call it that just slightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into that, make it a bit lighter of a color. And then we have that, oops, I copied the wrong code. So let me actually update that. The code I want is F7, F7, F7. We like using that for a, a subtle background because as you can see, that blue is way too, uh, way too extreme. So that should update now, good. Let's keep going down, looking at our options here. The next thing we have is for the you save color. Now this is what people will see on product pages for that price difference. I'm gonna keep this on red, but if you wanted to change it, this is where you could. Next, if we go to typography, this is going to be showing the fonts for the website. So the first option is for the headings, so any headings on the site. Right now it's set at Montserrat. I'm gonna change this here and we're gonna make this a font I don't know how to say, but I know we like the way it looks. So Fajala, I think it's called. There it is, Fajala 1. Go ahead and click Select, and you can see it updates in real time. This is where you can also change it if you want it to be bigger. You can go ahead and just use this dragger here. Uh, the slider, let's make it 130. Okay, that looks good. For the uh, font site, we're gonna keep it as Montserrat, but I do wanna change it to being a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna change this to a medium font weight. And this is something, by the way, guys, if you have like no experience with design or anything, it's totally fine. Just spend some time in here and experiment with changing things bigger and smaller in different fonts so you find something that really catches your eye, something you like the look of. But if we keep moving down forward here, we can go to a few different options, again, that are specific to the Dropship Lifestyle Shopify theme Manhattan. We have layout, so if you want the site to be wider, page width is currently 1200. Let's say you wanted it to be wider to fill up more space on a high definition, high resolution monitor. Maybe we bump that up to 1600. If you wanna change padding and spacing, you could do that there. When it comes to buttons, if you want there to be borders or different radiuses on how curved they are, you have all of those settings there as well. Variant pills, again, these are all different options you have. We're not gonna go through all of them right now because there is so much that can be done, but I just wanna show you some of these options that you have to really make the site your own.
Again, not every theme is gonna give you all of this customization, but we do inside of the Dropship Lifestyle Manhattan theme, so wanna show you this. Now, something else I'll just quickly edit here is social media. By default, Shopify in your footer, I'll scroll down here, will have social media links. If your store does not have these pages yet, I recommend removing these links or else you're gonna have links that go to Shopify social pages and you do not want to do that. So I'm simply going to delete them. And as I do, you'll see that those buttons or those icons get removed from the footer. Now in the future, when we create social pages for different platforms, we can add those links back in, then those icons will appear again and they'll link to where they actually should go. But from there, you'll see there's a bunch more settings. Again, not things we need to touch now, but things that are there for you. But what I wanna do now is come back here to the theme customizer, and by default, you'll see it has us on the home page. So there's a drop down here that you'll see in Shopify, and if you click into products or collections or collection list or pages, you can modify any of these. But we're gonna start with the home page, and the way that we can make edits is simply by clicking into the different sections. So again, something unique to the Dropship Lifestyle Manhattan theme is the announcement bar, which you see right up top here. And let's say you wanted to have a discount code, right? Save 10% until Friday, you know, enter coupon code, save 10, whatever it is. This is where you'd be able to edit that. You can simply type in the text up here for what you want that to be. You could change the colors based on the colors we just entered and that will edit it for you. Again, we're not going to use this at this point because again, we're assuming this is a demo store. So I'm simply going to click the little I here and it's going to hide it. So now you can see it's gone. If we want it back in the future, click it, there it is. And again, we can edit it in the right navigation. Now, next thing is the header menu. So when I click on that, you'll see it shows this section highlighted, and here is where we can make any changes that we would want to. For example, again, this is a theme th specific thing, but we have a sticky header that you could turn on, and let's say we always want that on, and we click save. What that's going to do is as the user scrolls through your site, the header will stay up top with them. Here, you could change if you want a different menu linked in your header menu. You could choose that here. Again, I'm gonna leave it on main menu because we already created that to be what we want. If you wanna have things here like have a question, you could type in a phone number. So we don't have one obviously for this demo store, but if I did enter one, then go ahead and type that in. Now you see our phone number is there as well. For here, for navigation menu color, this is where you can customize obviously how that looks. So let me go ahead and grab our color codes again and make some changes here so we can make it match our site. For background color, we're gonna make this black. So I'm gonna click into this and then I'm gonna just put the hex code for black and click off it. Now you can see it's black. For first level link color, we're gonna make this white. For submenu background color, we're gonna make this white as well. And then for submenu link color, we're gonna make that our blue that we used before, which is now saved to one of our recent colors, so super easy to change. For the border color, we're gonna make that our pink, so I'm gonna click into that. For the hover color, we're gonna leave that as white. And then for the link color, we're gonna make those our teal. So I'm gonna click into that. And for active link, we will make that teal as well. And for here, we will go white. Now you have some more options here, obviously, that again are dropship lifestyle theme specific. But if you wanted to do things like show a free shipping bar that will automatically show how much more money the customer needs to spend or add to their cart to enable free shipping, you could turn that on and then that will display that as you see right there. But again, for the demo store, we're going to leave that off. And then you have even more settings that you could change. If you want a language selector or a region selector, all of those settings are located in this section of the Manhattan theme. But let's keep going. We're gonna move through this page together to really get our store built out. And we will now move in to what we call a slideshow. That is this section here. So if I click slideshow, you'll see we can now edit it. And we do have three slides in the template that gets uploaded. We're only going to use one here, so I'm gonna delete the next two. I'm gonna click on this here, and then you see we can name it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll grab a name for it. But the first thing I'm gonna do is select the image that we want to appear there. And again, we already uploaded these. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that image, click done. And there's the image now. And I'm going to rename this to catch more waves. And I am going to go ahead and come down here and change the subheading as well. So let me go ahead and paste that in. Okay, and it keeps scrolling me down, but I'll keep scrolling back up for you guys. And uh, let me click back into it. And then what we're going to do also over here is change the button label to shop now. And we will have this go to the hybrid 
collection. So I can just search for hybrid, click hybrid surfboard, there you go. And then I want this to be bottom right. And that's gonna move everything over there for me. There we go. And let's go through a few more settings together. The container, that's the background. I don't want that to be shown, so I'm gonna click off it. And now you can see it is gone. So now you can see, again, like we haven't made many changes, but it really is starting to come together, right? And what I can do from here is simply click save. And now this is what our homepage will look like when people go to it. Again, if I wanna change anything with the way things look, we can just go through our settings here. Um, let me see, I wanna make this all right. I wanna put it all on the right. So we have it set to bottom right here, but let's come to the additional settings we have. Desktop alignment, let's make it right. There you go, now that's all pushed to the right so you can see it clearly with that background. So now what we can do is move to the next section, which is called collection list. And when you click into it, again, you're going to have the different settings here that you can customize. Again, specifically for the Manhattan theme, but I'm going to go ahead and start making some changes here. And the first one that I'm going to do is just change the text because right now it says collections. I'm going to make this say shop our featured collections. And then from here, we can come in and go through all of our different settings. I'm not going to edit any of these settings yet. We may come back and do it in the future. But the first thing I wanna do is actually add collections in here, okay? So to do that, I can click into the collection and then I can select a collection to be there. The first one, we will do best sellers. Let me just click that. The second one here, we will do staff picks. So I'll choose a collection here and find staff picks. Search for it to make it easy. Okay, and then the next one we will do is top rated. Okay, go ahead and click select. And you'll see here, this, this still looks bad, right? Now we have three different collections set. Uh, the first one didn't save, so let me just come back there and do bestsellers. But you'll see it does look pretty bad. And the reason it looks pretty bad is because what it is doing is pulling uh, basically images from products that are in those collections. But what we can do is in our collections, upload custom images that will show in this section instead of this randomness. So let's do that now. I'm gonna jump back and exit out of here. I'm gonna come back to products and then go into collections. And then let's go into best sellers first. So I'm gonna click best sellers. And here where we can add images, I'm going to select an image that we want to do for this. So I'll choose this one. Then I will let that image uh, be associated with this collection and click save. And the next one we're going to do was staff picks. So let me find that. I'm gonna add an image here. We'll do this image, click save, we'll go back. And the last one was the top rated that we added. So let me pull up top rated. And then I will add an image to this one. Go ahead and click save. And then we will navigate back to online store and we will go back to customizing the Manhattan theme. And now you'll see if we come down to this section, it has those images that we just associated with those collections, which looks much, much better. Now, if you did wanna make any more changes here, again, to things like the colors and whatnot, you can change the color scheme and that will change either the background color, if you have different background colors you selected earlier. Again, however you want it to look, you can select those options right here. And again, it really is starting to come together now and look pretty good. So some more sections, we have one called rich text. If you wanted to add any more information about your brand, you can do that. Not necessary for a demo store, so I'm just going to hide that. Here we have featured collection. Again, if there was a different collection you wanted to show off with the best selling products, that's where you could do it. But I'll also just hide that for now. But I will edit this for image banner. This is where you can link to something, for example, like a buyer's guide, right? So let's say you had one created. Here you can select an image and I'll find the image that we created for that purpose right here. And uh, one cool thing, I'll show you this real quick, that I love about the Dropship Lifestyle Shopify theme is you have the option to, let me come down here, and turn on an image behavior, in this case, ambient movement. And now you'll notice, if you look at that background, it's slowly moving back and forth, which I think looks really good. So from here, we can enter some more information that we want. So let me go ahead and grab some uh, text that we'll put on top of this, and we'll come back in here and we'll change that to say buyer's guide. And then for the sub headline, we will put this, click into that, put that there, okay, great. And then for buttons, we can do maybe for the first one, we can do learn more. And we don't have a buyer's guide page created on this store yet, but let's just say we did. And for now, I'll just link to our about us page. And then for the second button here, maybe we want that one to say shop now. And we will send this one just to uh, all of our products. So let me go to products and then click all products. 
Okay, and let's get rid of this background too because that's not necessary. We'll use that transparent background again. So I can come here and turn off the container. And now we have this on our homepage. And maybe we really wanna show off this shop now button. So for the second bu button color, let's make that our pink. And then for the text, let's make that white. So the colors are kind of inversed there. And now again, homepage really coming together. And again, not that long, right? We've been going for what, 45 minutes? It doesn't take long to build a very nice looking store. Now, the next section here is the email sign up. I recommend everybody use this because you should be building an email list. Emails make up about 30% of our monthly revenue and they cost $0 to send out if you're using Shopify email. So definitely take advantage of this setting or this section, I should say. I'll change this here to make it the teal background and I'll also just modify the text to make it a, a bit more unique. So let me come back up here, click into the header and I'll change this to join Shaka Nation. And then I'll leave that as is, but now people can opt in on our homepage. Then we have our blog section, and this has the three blogs that we just published. Again, if you don't have blogs yet, you could simply hide that and it's gone. But if you have blogs, you wanna show them off on your homepage, that is how you can do so. Coming down here, this is a section that we call our pre-footer. This is really good just for showing off unique value propositions for your store. So I'll show you how this works for enable pre-footer icons. I'll just go ahead and grab an image for the first one. And that will be our first image here. And let's say we offered free shipping on orders above $100. I can enter that here as the header. So now you see, join, oh, I copied the wrong text. So we will do free shipping for this one, 100 plus. And you can see that now there's a white image on the background, but not there. So let's also just change the color scheme here. I'll scroll down and I'll change this to background one. So it's white, so now it matches, looks good. We'll come back up here for our second icon here and we'll do the, the Shaka symbol. Go ahead and grab that. I will copy the text here and I will put that right here in the header. And then for the third one, let's go ahead and grab an image. We will do our little lightning bolt and click done. Again, these were all made in Canva, which if you're a member of the Dropship Blueprint, we show you how to make these extremely simply, even if you're not an experienced designer, um, really for free in Canva. Okay, then we'll do one more and uh, you could do more than four of these, but we'll do four for this store. We'll use this one right here and we will say easy returns. So let me grab that, put it right here. Easy returns, go ahead and click save. And now again, if you look at our homepage compared to where it was, what, less than 10 minutes ago, it's really starting to look nice, right? This is really coming along um, in not much time. And again, I have barely touched the, uh, the functionality and the customizability of the Manhattan theme, but this is some of the, the basic things you could do. Let's come down now though and go into our footer, which is obviously something that will be on the bottom of all of our pages. And let's start to make some modifications there. So I'm gonna come down all the way, and for the first one, I'm gonna modify the first footer menu, and or the first footer sec section, I should say, and I'm gonna call that contact us. And then here, I'm going to put to this bold and italic, put reach out, and then we can put our email address, the best one that people can use to get in contact with us, and a phone number. So I'll grab those, and I'll simply paste them right down here. And as I do, you see they now appear here. For the image, I'm also gonna put our logo down there. And then I can make it smaller because that is way too big. Let's see what it looks like if we make it 40%. It's a little too small. Maybe we go up to 60. See how that looks? Yep, I like that. Now we can modify our second menu here. And we will call this one our store name, which again is Shaka Surfboards. And then for here, we can choose which menu we want to appear. I want it to be this menu, so we're all good. The next one we're gonna come into and we're gonna change the name to Quick Links. I already like what these links are, so I'm not gonna be changing that. And then finally here, I'm gonna change this again in the opt-in in our footer. And I'm simply going to change this again to Join Shaka Nation. Sounds much better than, uh, than Newsletter. So we'll do Join Shaka Nation. And let me put the little uh, colon here. And I will click save. And then let me just pull up the store so you can see what it would look like to a potential website visitor. Okay, so here you go. Not bad, right? Again, not bad for about 40 minutes, 50 minutes of work. So. 
We're gonna make some more modifications now, but at this point, our homepage is created. The only thing I would change on this right now before contacting suppliers is obviously swapping out the phone number, either putting in a real number or deleting it. But as far as functionality, everything we need is there. But let's come back now into our customizer and let's go in to products and then we can go to our default product page customizer. You'll see it did pull over our whole header by default, which is great, that's what we want, but we do have more options here now. Again, these are going to be unique to the Manhattan theme, but we have things here like an expiring coupon code, and this you can make end in you know X amount of days or hours. You could change whatever that discount is that you want. We have estimated arrival dates, that's right here. You see that right here. This is where that can be edited, and it can be unique for different suppliers. For buy buttons, you can turn on sticky add to cart, which again, people usually need an extra app for that is built in with the Manhattan theme. You can put an add to cart icon on there and select any icon you want. Of course, you could change the colors, you could change the text, anything you wanna change, this is where to do it. For the description, you'll see we have it appear under the product, but if you want it to be on the side and I click that, it moved it right here. So let me just click save really quick and come back to the store. And then let me go to uh, that product page. So that was the blue one. Click in here, see the sticky add to cart. We have sticky header, obviously. And now the description is here on the sidebar. We also have the low stock alert turned on. Again, another thing built into the Manhattan theme, but it shows it just like that. So again, at this point, honestly, the product page is totally fine, but if you wanted to customize anything else, this is exactly where you could do it. So a few more things I could show you with collections if we go into that. If you want to change anything with what is shown in the either sidebar or the banner or anywhere on the page, again, modifications could be made here. You did see that cookie consent pop up earlier, but if you don't wanna use that, you could simply turn it off and it won't appear for anybody else at all anymore. But yeah, really not that difficult, right? When you know what to edit, when you have a great theme that has the built-in functionality that you want, you don't need a million apps charging you money every month and slowing down your store, you can use this theme which gets A scores when being speed tested and really just make those modifications and you will be more than ready to reach out and get approved with quality suppliers, again, silver and gold suppliers, the ones you actually want to do business with. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is switch back and we're gonna go into the Shopify settings and I'm going to show you how to configure them before going live. So let's go ahead and do that right now. To get to this screen, all you need to do is log in to your Shopify admin and then click that little gear icon in the bottom left. And the first setting you'll see is for your store details. This is where you can enter your store name. So in this case, it would be Shaka Surfboards. And then of course, if you have a phone number already, you can enter it there. For store email, this is whatever email you want to use. Again, this can be updated in the future, but this is where emails will come through. When people buy from you, when people fill out your contact form, this is the email that you want to use going forward as a business. There are some more settings on this page, like your business address if you have one, the store currency, the time zone you wanna use, but most of those things, again, should be configured by default and there's no need to change. But if you want to, this is where you would make those changes and then click save. The next setting is just called plan, and this will show whatever plan you chose with Shopify. I recommend the basic plan that will cost $39 a month after those first three months at $1 a month. But if you wanted to change your billing cycle, if you wanted to switch plans, this is where you would do so. Now the next setting is called billing, and this is just gonna show what card or cards you have on file, how much you're going to pay and when you're going to pay it. And also once you start paying for Shopify or any apps, this will show a history of what you paid and what you paid it for. Next setting is called users and permissions. And this page is very useful. If you start either hiring people or even just freelancers to assist with different parts of your store, here you can add staff members. And what you can do when you add them is put in their email address and choose what they'll have access to. For example, if you only want them to have access to the theme customizer, you could do that so they can't see your billing and previous orders and anything that is really more personal data. You can control that through the staff permission setting. Now, the next setting in Shopify is payments. This is where you can link different payment gateways. My advice is to use Shopify payments. It makes the whole buying process very easy for your customers, and it makes it very easy for you to get money in your bank account without needing a third-party merchant account. You can simply sign up here. You can also link your PayPal account here, but that is where it's managed. 
Next, we have checkout. And here you can choose basically to customize your checkout, which I would recommend you do. You could just upload your logo again and any other colors you want to show there. You can also modify your customer contact method. I recommend using email here and then leaving this on where they can download the shop app. Not gonna get into detail on what that is right now, but it is very helpful here. If you wanna require first and last name, if you want to not include a company name, anything with what addresses you want people to have, I do recommend leaving email pre-selected. And then also you can have SMS turned on to collect that as well. Tipping, I definitely don't recommend turning that on. I think enough people are asking for tips now that it's uh, something to avoid and no one should feel weird about having to leave a tip after buying from your store. Here, other settings we do leave on by default, but this is where you can see all of your settings. So once you have this configured the way you want, you can simply go ahead and click save and then move on to the next setting, which is customer accounts. For most people, the settings here are best to just leave it as is. But if you wanted people to have to log in to buy from you, you can modify those settings here. For shipping and delivery, this is where you're gonna set different shipping rates if you have them, even if it's free shipping, plus locations you ship to. So for example, by default, this is what Shopify creates. You'll see we have domestic shipping and they give different options. What I typically do here is delete everything that charges for delivery. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then for free shipping here, you see it's set at $50 and up. Here you can edit it by clicking these three dots and clicking edit rate. You can also modify the shipping time here. So maybe it's standard three to four business days. If there is no minimum, maybe we just set this at zero for, because we sell high ticket products, so that's what we typically do. Click done. And then for other markets here, for example, international, if you don't wanna ship internationally, you can just delete that and it won't be set up to ship internationally. People won't have that option in the checkout. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Then we can go to taxes and duties. Here, if you are selling anywhere where you are required to charge tax or if you have a nexus, you can configure those settings right from this page. From locations, this is definitely really only needed for people that do have multiple warehouses or multiple fulfillment centers. If you wanna track real-time inventory at those different locations, this is where you'd want to add multiple locations. Again, for most people, not necessary. Next, we have gift cards. And one of the things Shopify allows you to do is sell gift cards. If you do wanna do that, I would recommend putting an expiration date on them, simply because you don't wanna have a store where you're selling a bunch of these and your store now has a liability for all this money for gift cards that never expire. So. Whether you wanna make that one year, two years, three years, whatever it is, if you're going to sell them, I would recommend setting that up. And then also activating Apple Wallet Passes for gift cards, again, if you're gonna use them. Here, you could change the name, you could change the color scheme, and this is gonna change what they look like when people are in their cart. So again, you can grab your hex codes, make it look however you want it to look, and then click Save. Now markets, this is important. Again, for most people that especially follow the dropship lifestyle model and sell large and heavy items, I only recommend selling in the country where your supplier is located. So what you could do here is go to international, make sure it is inactive. But if you wanted to ever activate it or make any changes, that is where you would do so. Next, we have apps and sales channels. And these three were set up by default when we created our account. So we have online store. That simply means selling on your website. We have email. We do use and recommend Shopify email, so I'd recommend keeping that. And then you have point of sale. This is what people would use if you had an actual store or pop-up shop with a card reader. Obviously, we don't do that, so you could simply go ahead and click uninstall on that. And then there will be more that appear as we add more, but that's gonna be covered again in the next part of this lesson. So for now, yours should just say online store and email. Domains, again, will show any domains you have. And like I recommended earlier, you should buy a domain name that should appear here, and that should be the primary for your online store. For customer events, you don't need to worry about this. This is where you could do advanced tagging and advanced triggers for people visiting different pages for different ad platforms. I'll talk about how to do that though in the next step of this lesson. Again, you don't have to change anything here. For brand, this is where you can do things like, again, upload your logo and your color schemes that will be used in Shopify emails, so you should modify this. Notifications, this is the emails that will be sent automatically to customers at different stages of their buyer journey. If you want to modify any of those email templates, this is where you can do so. After that, we have custom data. Again, I don't recommend changing any of this. It's not necessary, it is advanced, and it's almost never necessary. So especially if you're new, don't worry about this. For languages, again, I'm assuming you're selling to one country in one primary language. Make sure that language is there as the default, and there is no need to add any more. 
for policies, we already did discuss this page. This is where you can create those custom pages, basically, for different policies that will be linked to your store. I talked about the two you should create at this point, but in the future, if you wanna create more, this is where you can create them. And finally, we have a store activity log, which will show everything that's changed, that you've changed, or a staff member you added have changed in the future. So very helpful just to always keep a running change log of what has changed on your store. But that is it for the Shopify settings. Again, you can get deep into the weeds on these, but for new stores, it's really not necessary. So with that being said, let's move on to the final part of this lesson, which by the way, congratulations if you've made it this far. If you have, definitely leave a like if you haven't already and leave a comment below letting me know if you got value from this. But then let's go ahead and move into the final step, which is talking about Shopify apps and sales channels. Now, I don't wanna make this tutorial longer than it needs to be because just last week at the time of recording this, I published published a brand new video to this YouTube channel sharing the top 14 Shopify apps and sales channels to use. So I'm gonna link to that below this lesson. And if you watch that, it'll go into great detail about what these apps are, how they work and how to install them. But just so you know what they are, if you don't wanna click that link in the description and go there, I'll let you know that apps basically control the way your store can look and function. You could think of these as add-ons that do things that your store wouldn't do out of the box. Now, some of these are free, some of them are paid. There are not many that you need, especially if you're using the Manhattan theme. But the way you could find these is simply by clicking apps in the bottom left of your Shopify admin, and then looking for whatever it is you want. One I recommend everybody use is called judge.me. We use this to collect and display reviews on our stores. And to do this, all you need to do is go to the app page and then click where it says install. From there, it's gonna ask if you wanna give that app the permission it needs to basically do its thing. Say yes, click install app, and then that app will now be on your store and you can configure the settings accordingly. Now, there are a few more sales channels that I recommend you use. The first is called Google and YouTube, and this is an app made by Shopify. So let me just search for Google, we'll do it that way so it comes up quickly. And let's find here, Google and YouTube, this is free. And we use this to connect Google Analytics 4 to our Shopify accounts, which helps make tracking very easy. So you can go ahead and click install on that sales channel. And once you click add sales channel, give it the permission, it will now be added to your store. I also think everybody should be using the Facebook and Instagram sales channel. So if you just search for that, it'll come up in the Shopify app store. Again, this is from Shopify and it's free to install. So you can just go ahead and click install on that, give it the permissions and that will be added as well. And then of course you can configure the settings through their setup guide that is built in to the sales channel. These all help with you getting more traffic and giving better data to these different platforms so that you have the most data for analytics that you could possibly have. And so that when sales start coming in, you know where they're actually coming from. So guys, those were the 10 steps. And again, I hope you got value from this episode. If you did, please do give it a like and leave a comment. Be sure to bookmark it and share it with anybody that would also get value. And again, if you are a Dropship Lifestyle member and for some reason you're still watching this one, be sure to go into the blueprint, go into module three, because here we have, what is it? almost 20 new lessons showing you everything about Shopify step-by-step -step in detail, how to use the Manhattan theme, plus a whole lot more. Again, that is in module three of the Dropship Blueprint. And if you're watching this right now, and for some reason you're not yet a member of Dropship Lifestyle, I'm gonna post a link to Dropship webinar in the description as well. When you click it, it's gonna take you to this page where you can register for an upcoming in-depth training I have to show you how we've built stores in 2024. It's also gonna give you a list of 500 profitable product ideas that you can sell on Shopify in 2024. And of course, on that training, I'll also make a special offer for our award-winning program, voted best e-commerce course by Shopify, the Dropship Blueprint. So again, links will be in the description. Thank you again. I appreciate you. Hope you got a ton of value and I wish you nothing but success with your Shopify store. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I'll be back next Monday with yet another video just like this one. I'll see you there.